Greetings! Today I have another piece of uh, electronics, consumer electronics to rip apart and see what makes it tick just because I love taking things apart. So today's hero or victim is a LG DVD recorder. Um, it's It was uh, a recorder, DVD recorder with Freeview and USB, I guess, and uh, whatever else. It has suffered some more, some sort of abuse, and there is stuff rattling inside. And I suspect someone else uh, had a go at this before me, because there are some screws missing, and uh, HDMI output is missing. So I'm not sure what's inside. Um, this was left outside the junk bin and that I went to to get rid of junk from my car and I saw this lying uh, so I couldn't resist uh, especially it's a DVD recorder so uh, there should be somewhat powerful um, laser diode inside the tray doesn't open by the way anymore or doesn't close it moves a little bit so some worry is that someone already had a go at this and removed the diode and pinned everything else because the laser assembly has been touched so let's let's have a look right okay the drive not surprising uh, drive seems to be a standard computer format case thing uh, almost so yeah that looks like that hasn't been removed so the diode uh, should be here there we go class 3b visible and invisible laser radiation when open avoid exposure to the beam yes that's what we want to see we want to see warning signs that's always a good sign so someone did have a go at this there is or maybe this just fell apart, and maybe this never had a HDMI output, or maybe someone hacked it out to do something with it. Probably they did because there are ribbon cables missing from here, so someone did have a go at this, definitely, and then binned it. So just as an overview, what we've got here is the power supply section. Oh wow, this had its brains blown out of this. You've got to see this. So, um, how do I do this? Let me, let me try to zoom in. Let me see how much can I zoom in. If this focuses. That's, if I get any closer, I think I will lose focus. Uh, yeah, you can see the, uh, one of the bridge rectifiers has just exploded. You know what, this calls for a macro time. So, right, I'll be right back. Okay, that's better. Um, look at him poor bastard um, had his uh, brains blown out of the equation there uh, I'm not sure what it is it's not a bridge rectifier as I thought uh, originally I thought it's uh, another one of those maybe there was two of them for some reason uh, but then why would they be on the primary side but anyways um, this one is some was some sort of uh, IC controlling the uh, works uh, maybe some switching transistor or something in a funny package uh, strangely this is the first time I see one with uh, one leg missing now this leg has not been blown uh, out um, as you can see there is no uh, 
no hole on the PCB for it. So this was a strange seven pin package with one leg just missing. Usually they either not connect them internally um, or there is uh, a couple of them um, just shorted together so uh, to increase uh, current capabilities. But this one is an odd one. I haven't seen one like that before. So that's interesting. Um, a seven pin dip eight package. Um, okay. That, I wonder what happened to this. This might have been uh, a lightning strike or some surge uh, or someone was messing about with it. It might have been the case that someone uh, that this blew up and uh, and gave its life, uh, gave the ghost away. Then uh, someone had a go at this, opened it and decided, OK, uh, can't be bothered. It's probably toasted completely. Uh, and took something out of this, uh, everything else they left and just bin the rest of it. So, yeah, that's interesting. Always nice to see something exploded. Um, over here, I think there was a resistor and a capacitor that's been either desoldered or it has vaporized. Um, But by the looks of it, it's not been desoldered because there is still bits of wire there. I think this whole thing vaporized pretty much and it failed uh, in a magnificent manner, catastrophically. This, the wires were, were not cut off. There is a, quite a few components missing on the primary side. So the whole of primary side has got a ton of bits uh, missing from the that's a mystery now this the common mode choke I think it was um, on, let me get this this one here this one here has um, failed mechanically so this was either a huge shock uh, you can see there was a section of it uh, just blown off and the whole thing just uh, came off of its feet. The feet are left in the um, in the PCB. So not sure what's happened. Definitely an interesting failure mode uh, when your uh, consumer electronics device uh, explodes and vaporizes. There is a little bit of flux residue on. So again, that would say perhaps this was desoldered but then I'm looking at the other components and they also have flux residue uh, sorry I wasn't in the view of camera so you can see this bridge rectifier around um, around the pins there is a little bit of flux residue just like over the other pins so that's uh, that's residue of the uh, production process they're just being a little bit messy um, but over here, if you look at this, um, there was a resistor um, in here, um, judging by the component uh, name, which is, there we go, R101 or R104 next to it. So if you see those, it's not been desoldered because there is remains of the uh, component legs in there. And also it hasn't been cut off because the legs are within quite, quite a bit within the... Uh, in the PCB, in the hole, they're not flush uh, with the surface of it, so it's impossible to cut them like that. Uh, so my only my only conclusion can be that this whole thing uh, exploded, especially uh, looking at this. So this is a beautiful failure mode. Um, yeah, let's see what else uh, we can see over here. So there's a few more uh, similar actions on the secondary side. So you can see the D121, that was never in place. So that wasn't there uh, to begin with. But the D123, uh, there's only legs left of it. Let's see what else. There is another one. If I find it, there we go. ZD151, so Zen diode, I suspect. 
was there, but it's not there. So it's quite interesting how this failed. Um, hey. It must have been spectacular, especially if someone was watching an action movie. And there was a gunfight scene, or maybe a suspense, and there was uh, an explosion to happen. And yeah, this thing exploded catastrophically. That must have been hilarious. Anyways, let's go back to the normal mode. Okay, back out of macro. By the way, my macro system uh, is a unique and very uh, very advanced, I should say, uh, setup. So, my macro is this. So, it's a lens that I got out of something. I'm not sure what it was. I can't remember now. That's why I'm uh, hunting for different lenses to see what else I can do with them. Uh, and it's held on on my camera uh, objective uh, with just two pieces of white tack. Uh, whenever I want to do macro, I'll, I'll stick this on. What it does, it enlarges slightly, but then uh, it also allows the camera to focus really small, uh, really close, uh, close up. So I can do the camera does uh, up to ten times optical zoom. So I can zoom in ten times. Uh, then this zooms a little bit further and it allows me to grab the focus a really close up so um, the lens is I think it's flat on one side and uh, round on the other side at least that's what it looks like but anyways uh, I don't know too much about optics um, but this seems to seems to work as a makeshift uh, makeshift microscope I guess so back to this okay interesting to note uh, there are those uh, there we go uh, sponges uh, wrapped in um, conductive material and that was glued onto the DVD drive and on the other side this was touching to case this is to reduce the interference so this doesn't uh, doesn't stop your microwave exploding as well when it operates uh, anyways let's take the rest of it I think the front should clip off yeah it's going Slowly but surely. And at the bottom. Oh, come on. Ripping stuff apart is amazing. Okay, front panel. Uh, some buttons uh, there we go so the power button was just pressing onto what was it pressing onto huh? is there something missing clearly uh, <laughs> Someone definitely had a go at this. Maybe someone had two of them and decided to, and two of them blew up, so decided to make uh, one working one out of uh, two faulty ones. Um, I've done that before. Uh, it's a common thing to do. Easiest way to fix something if you've got two of them, and as a, you've got a total of uh, working parts sufficient to make one working unit, you just exchange modules and make one work and write off the other one. But yeah, there was. Uh, there was another board here because otherwise this the power button doesn't press anything unless it's telepathic um, so there was something here that's missing let's let's open the other thing there's a springy contact again that's to 
connect the grounds and uh, reduce the electromagnetic interference. And another one here, the same story. And around the around the screw posts, they've left uh, left the solder mask off, so it has plenty of uh, little dimples of solder to connect to, so it makes a really nice contact to ground on uh, on the board. And there is even more. Uh, shielding on this underneath coming out so what's holding this something is on oh, a clip there we go oh I didn't even know this opens there we go so this this will go get recycled and here we have a beautiful display Futaba it says on it it's quite a custom display I guess maybe it's possible to, to drive this somehow um, possibly I'll experiment and here you can see uh, this was uh, shielding the connectors and so USB and Firewire and whatever else it had. Another interesting thing, uh, the buttons are not the usual square variety. Uh, the little round domes, little tucked switches, so that's unusual. There is a little driver chip underneath, uh, underneath the LCD but I'm mean, let's actually see because they've put the clips uh, through the board and melted them a little bit or they've melted once this was going through a uh, solder bath so to when this was flow soldered because I suspect it was so I had to cut them off and now I should be able to just to, or maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go. So to bend this out, and there is a driver chip, which says ETEC ET one six three one five DA two one B B B B B. Um. So yeah, possibly. Maybe I'll try to drive it. I don't know. Uh, depends how how bored I will get one day. Uh, I might just might just try to uh, drive this display somehow. Could make a clock out of this, I guess. You wouldn't go up to twenty four hours. Oops, out of camera again. So you wouldn't go up to twenty four because the first digit is not capable of displaying. Uh, number two, but I could, you could do it in a 12-hour format, make it into nice, uh, nice clock. That would be nice and visible because it's a, uh, it's the type of display. I don't know what it's called, but it's basically illuminates light. It's not like LCD that ne needs backlight. Um, other than okay, other than that, there's infrared receiver, USB port, FireWire port. Uh, some red, green, blue, uh, what they called phono jack RCA type of RCA uh, female plugs, and that's it. So let's move on. Screws, screws on here. What else here? 
oh I get so excited when I get to take something apart. I find it most relaxing. Okay, there must be screws on the back. And one fell out. Never mind. Yes, there is quite a few. So let's get those out and we'll see what else is on the wall and have a closer look at the board. Maybe I should have done the should have taken this out and done the mac did the macro afterwards. But anyways, we can always go back to it. There's just a lot of screws, but I guess uh, I guess this is the the back end of the device where end consumer will forcefully plug in uh, plug in uh, different plugs and not always the right one in the right socket, so they don't fit. But uh, very often end user will attempt to fit not the right plug into not the right socket by just applying a lot of force really so they just want to avoid or minimize the amount of warranty claims by screwing it as solidly as possible so you can't break it when you've got it home the choke fell out now completely so yeah that's nice of him self disassemble oh I should have checked that ouch So, I don't suspect this was plugged in uh, for quite some time, but uh, the electrolytic caps have uh, tend to sometimes regain some of its uh, uh, some of its energy uh, magically. So, I think that's what happened with this one. Whoa! Yes. Ouch, that was interesting, so never trust equipment with big caps if they've been on, uh, if they've been switched off for a long time, it doesn't matter, just discharge everything that you can. Because otherwise it gets quite unpleasant. But I got shocked many times in my life, so it's not the first time and most definitely not the last one. So what we've got here... is a Mitsumi Japan component here with a big array of capacitors and that's probably doing some analog uh, processing. And there is some other miscellaneous package here from Malaysia. IC25X D78F0. It's probably a microprocessor. D78F0535. And here NXP, or maybe this is the processor from NXP SAA138GHL. I don't know, those things are you've got to look them up if, if you can be bothered. Okay, RF Khan, let's look inside the RF Khan. That's always can be interesting okay there is a 20 point 
48 megahertz crystal and uh, a tiny chip I would need to get into macro to see that because the writing on it is so small it's uh, impossible to read and there's uh, three single inline packages small K9659 X7253 and K9659 so two of the same ones and one different doing something uh, RFE RFE RF like not exactly sure what and on the back a few more tiny little components Again, this stuff will be probably completely alien to me. Oops. This I don't normally do that, but this is this is a one way one way journey. I mean, this this is dead anyways. So yeah, not much else uh, on here. So the main uh, the main power supply, which gave me a interesting uh, wake up. I don't need my, don't need another coffee today. I'm well charged up now. Uh, some analog processing, I suspect, over here. Probably that's uh, for all the inputs or outputs or whatever this was and whatnot. That's just I'm judging this by the array of caps uh, and the other volume of big uh, electrolytic caps around it. Um, some sort of processor which hold on if this was this way and this was this this was possibly sending data to the to the main board uh, sorry display board yeah so this this is driving the display and controlling uh, controlling the inputs you can see there is a matching connector matching width so this was had a ribbon cable going into this and it was basically communicating with this and oh and the uh, uh, infrared it's talking to your remote control and this is probably the main uh, sort of control unit for the whole device so this has got like stuff like um, the encoder decoder and other prerequisites for um, for decoding stuff on or encoding or running this sort of device they usually run uh, Java as well a lot of them this tuner by the way those chips probably are doing the free view uh, stuff so there is probably uh, the modulating the uh, digital video bro broadcast and just outputting uh, analog out uh, out of the out of the whole can and probably that's what's happening and and I screwed it up so I was recording this uh, at least I thought I was recording uh, but I didn't so I missed out a section where I took apart the actual DVD drive and took this out. Uh, there was a little bit of struggle in extracting the uh, DVD diodes. Um, but I managed, uh, the glue seemed to be quite dry so I was able to pry this open and, uh, and pull the diodes apart. I got two DVD diodes out of this. So there is one uh, that's sitting in, in its housing and that's the second one one is a CD or oh, actually one is a DVD read one is DVD write I suspect but I might be wrong on this so don't quote me on this um, here is another one I suspect this is the CD uh, CD laser diode because uh, those are quite complex from what I remember uh, but I might do another video just on that alone because it's quite interesting. There is actually not one beam, but uh, quite uh, quite a few beams uh, in a, a CD readout. Uh, one is for the data, and there is uh, quite a few to keep the keep the head on track of the on track of the track. And there is this which was embedded. 
here at the back and I couldn't figure out uh, what's it doing in terms of uh, optical path. Uh, this was sitting uh, just here and I'll go over I'll go over all the, uh, the optical path in a moment of this whole assembly. Uh, but uh, yeah, not sure what that is. Uh, maybe a dial just to a uh, photo dial just to uh, control and monitor uh, laser output. But what I've got over here, uh, when I was tearing this apart, I got this desoldered. So this is uh, just eight wires to uh, that go directly to the coils controlling the focusing lens. This one here. Uh, so want, wanted to keep that intact. Uh, is it eight or six? I think it's a. I don't know. It's six. Um, so I wanted to keep that intact to keep the assembly uh, in in good shape. I wanted to uh, try to drive this later with uh, with something, see what's uh, what I can get out of this. Um, so one one laser diode was was here, uh, pointing this direction, and one was here pointing this direction. So the actual optical path. Of the uh, of the whole assembly is going this way here straight through this there will be a small portion of um, of the beam reflected uh, that way but that's not important and it will go through here and then there is uh, an angled uh, angled mirror that directs it straight into the focusing lens the second laser, which is pointed this direction, shoots onto this mirror. That goes onto this mirror like this. So through here, like this, and then yet again straight into the angled mirror to point uh, uh, down into into the focusing lens. So. What I should be able to achieve with this, uh, that's why I wanted to keep this as a whole assembly, I should be able to use uh, two separate lasers to combine this into one beam and see what I can get uh, out of that. I'll, I'll play with the focusing uh, and whatnot a little bit. There is... There's uh, some sort of lens uh, in here that's in one of the uh, that's the smaller laser diode that was there. So one was like this, this one was like this, and this one like this. And there was a little lens in there. I'm sure you can see that reflecting light a little bit, held with uh, two little spring clips, and that's. Uh, that's all there is to it. So uh, the whole assembly is quite nice. Uh, I've, man I've managed to keep it intact. So hopefully uh, I shall have enough time to uh, play around with this and see um, what do we get if we combine two different lasers and see what we can do with it. The diodes, I'll try to uh, drive them. See how do they compare with uh, with the cheap uh, Chinese eBay stuff uh, that you can you can get, supposedly the the writer diodes, which should be the this one the, in the bigger uh, bigger molding, they should be quite powerful. Uh, that should uh, should be able to uh, comfortably engrave uh, soft material, but uh, that's yet to be confirmed. We'll see. And this and this, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but uh, experiments possibly will show in the near future. Um, other than that, that's all there is to it. Uh, it's a shame that I've lost the video of uh, ripping apart uh, the other stuff. The actual drive it was quite interesting. There was a nice, uh, there was a nice stepper motor. I've got here. I am going to keep that. So that's the stepper motor from it, uh, from it. Uh, really nice assembly, and I just kept the 
the slide that was hitting onto uh, onto the groove of the stepper motor. And this is uh, this is the motor that was driving uh, the actual disc uh, brushless motor. Uh, very easy to drive, so it's uh, even on the on the PCB that's uh, actually riveted over to the piece of, to a piece of metal, uh, quite thick and rigid, and that's got uh, A3, A2, and A1, so all three phases and common, so three phases and common uh, labeled, so should be somewhat straightforward to drive if I wanted to and that's that's pretty much all I got uh, out of that so yeah shame that uh, one video is missing but not that that much of an issue um, anyways that's all there was from this uh, impromptu uh, teardown one way LG DVD recorder I hope you liked it, if you did, uh, or have anything to comment on, please do feel free to leave a comment below the video, or subscribe, or click like if you think uh, that it was worth it, it must have been if you're still listening to me at this time, uh, anyways, that's all for, from this, take care, see you next time.